Hey guys, this is John and I'm playing Yotun in the three minute pool on ICC. Yotun opens with b4 and we will respond in simple fashion against this. Let's go bishop g4 actually, this seems kind of enterprising. Now c4. I think I'll just play e6 against that. Reinforce the center. He's planning some trickery, I can tell. <laughs> okay, let's just develop. I don't want to take on b4 yet because I lose g7. Alright, so if I, if I take this pawn, what kind of bad things are going to be befall me? If I take on b4, what's he going to do to me? I don't see it. Take, is it like c5 or something? That would be extreme. No, c5 can't. I could just play knight bd7 if he does that. Taking on d5, I take with a pawn. I'm calling your bluff, dude. I don't think you have it. He's playing at lightning speed, though. Yeah, I think he was bluffing, or just didn't see that uh, the pawn would actually be hanging. We'll see how he plays it. He might go g4, bishop g6, g5 as a way to stir up trouble. We do have knight h5 then, though. Yeah, now he's starting to think, so that's a good sign for me. Really, you're going to do that. No, I don't believe it. I'm taking with the queen. I think he's going to take c7. I could take on a1, but he gets like a check here. Do I really care about that, though? I mean, king e7. He takes here. I have knight d7. He does take b4, then. Uh, let's play it safe. Let's just castle. I think my position is so good, I can just do this. Not let him check on c8. There might have been better moves. I don't know. But uh, this one seems simple enough. Okay, so I can just develop, because he can't take here, because I take on a1. So I'm cutting off his queen from defending. Okay, let's take here. And d4. This move just opens lines. Let's take. If he takes h5, I take on uh, f2 and just crush. Oh, did I have... Oh, no, I didn't have queen a1. <laughs> My pawn was blocking it. Okay, let's go here. I thought for a second I had missed something. But nope. Okay, let's just develop. Letting him take on b7 if he wants. If he takes, I'm going to play bishop e4. Harass his knight. Maybe threaten some discoveries, too. Okay, here I can give a check, though. Check. And he has to play bishop d1. Yeah, and maybe after bishop d1, then I can play knight e5. Attacking his queen, he takes it. I have knight d3, check. That looks quite good. Let's do that. That's the first major tactic I see, so we're going to go for it. Didn't want to go knight b4 check. because he had queen takes b4 against that. So now I'm winning an exchange, and he can't castle after this. I can pre-move this. So I'm going to do it no matter what. And if he takes my knight by some random chance, it won't let me pre-move it anyways. So Probably queen c4 is what he'll do. I think I'll go rook c8 after that. Try to stay active. Knight d3 also looks really good, though. Yeah, let's go knight d3. He's still pinned with his bishop, so there's a limit on what he can do. I want to keep knight c1 as an option. I'm thinking he'll go knight d4, maybe not. I'm trying to figure out where he's going with his queen. It's kind of like he just doesn't really know himself. Let's go here now. Just free tempos on his queen. Get my rooks into the game. Make luft. Um, hmm. Okay, what to do now? Knight f4 doesn't really do much. Let's go knight e5. I want this knight gone. It's defending d2, and it's kind of annoying me. So I just want it gone. Maybe he'll go knight d4. So 
okay for us if he does, though. Okay, if he takes with the rook, I have queen c1, maybe. I don't want to take on a2. Well, I could have taken on a2, actually. I was worried about bishop b3 for a second, but I have queen takes d2 in that case. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Gotta hurry. Um, let's just go here. I'm trying to get to the back rank. Uh, this is suddenly annoying. Queen F somewhere. <laughs> now I'm on the defense. Let's try to trade. When in doubt, trade down. This time is so bad. Yeah, he's losing on time. Okay. So not the best job at the end, but I did get the job done. Let's go back and take a look. So he plays the Orantan. We just had a big um, discussion about the Orantan in one of my videos. Uh, I think it was a bullet video. Apparently it's it got its name from, um, I think, Lasker's trip to the Manhattan Zoo or Bronx Zoo in like the 1920s. Pretty sure it was Lasker. Somehow Lasker and Tartakower were involved in the story. And... Um, <laughs> you can go read the comments and see, but it has something to do with Lasker, like Lasker's interaction with the actual orangutan at the, at the Bronx Zoo. So anyways, E5 is a popular response to the orangutan, but I usually play D5, so I like to keep it out of orangutan players' theoretical knowledge. I feel like this is a pretty good line. If this is playable against like knight F3 and G3, I'm sure it's playable against B4 too. So C4. Black might be able to take this pawn. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with taking it. He'd probably move his queen and attack it. So I just reinforced e6 and also opened up my bishop to attack b4. Queen c1 was a strange move. Now here. He should probably just play like e3 now to defend the c4 pawn. Oh, he did actually play e3. <laughs> Never mind. He shouldn't do that because he loses b4. I apparently made the same mistake he did. Uh, e3, yeah, and bishop takes b4. Let's just throw the engine on and see what it says. Okay, it already likes black by quite a bit, although I know in the orangutan the engine always likes black, so that doesn't really tell us much. So it suggests saving the b-pawn somehow, a3 or c5, either of which I would have been completely fine in seeing. Yeah, so take on b4. Maybe bishop f5 was slightly more accurate. Seems like the bishop will be more useful on the h7 to b1 diagonal than the uh, h5 to d1 diagonal. Okay, so right here, when he took on c7, this is, a, this is an interesting moment of the game. This is probably the most interesting practical moment of this game. So I have 2 minutes and 11 seconds. It might be worth spending a little bit of that time trying to find a forced win, but... I was looking at lines like this and queen c8 check, and I wasn't check. quite certain how it should go. Check. Because I would lose my bishop. If I played like knight d7, he can take care of check. Check. And I see the engine doesn't think that that's bad for black or anything, but it looks scary to me this amount of time. Also, I'm noticing there's bishop b5 check, which I didn't even consider. Check. I'm still winning after knight c6, I guess. Check. Take, take. Queen Check. takes, just run. But it's kind of hard to calculate. Um, and it's messy too. And I felt like even if I castled, my position would still be really good. Which, yeah, as you can see, it is. So I just wanted to safeguard my king. It's it's nice to operate with a safe king in a fast game. So you play knight c3. Round about here, I'm sure I missed something good. d4. What happens if d4 knight d5? Ah. Haha. <laughs> Bishop takes Check. d2. And if king takes d2, I assume... Oh, take here. Check. And then open up the avenue for the queen to go attack a1. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a nice tactic. It, it just looks like a position where black must have some crushing tactical idea. So d4 does look good. If he takes, his king is completely open to the elements, too. Yeah, even a simple developing move will overwhelm him soon with all my pieces. His king side is completely undeveloped. I play knight c6, also good. And 
then here, and now d4. Here, take. For a split second after I took, I'm like, oh, I could have played queen a1. But then I realized my pawn was just on d4, so there's no way that was possible. <laughs> so take on e3. Okay, I'm missing better moves, huh? Rook a c8. And if queen takes b7, d takes e3. This is the type of position where a computer is going to make you feel pretty dumb. Because to a computer, this is a very trivial open position with uh, many ways for black to just win tactically. But to a human with less than two minutes on their clock, this is looking um, kind of messy, even though I knew black must be doing very well, if not winning outright. So I took and then played bishop back to g6. I still have a pretty big advantage, but it's getting smaller every move. This was a nice move, bishop e4. Attacking the pesky knight and also holding c6 and threatening x-rays on the queen. I like that move. Check. I gave a check here. Yeah, apparently missing better moves again. Here, here, check, check. on b1. Bishop d1 forced, and then I can take here at least. Or take here check. first, and then take on f3. Check. Should be winning material. Something like this. Check. Yeah. King c1. Queen takes h1 check. Whoops. Queen takes check. h1 check. If his king goes to c2 in this line, I have knight b4, Check. forking his king and queen. That's lights out. Check. Instead, I checked on a1 with the queen. Bishop d1, knight e5. Oh, I thought this was such a cool idea, but <laughs> the engine doesn't like it. Oh, the engine sees a nice counterattack from white. <laughs> this game was wild. <laughs> really wild for a three-minute game. Um... Yeah, this is a cool line. So, as following in the game, queen takes e4. I went here. Check. I was like, oh, proud of this move. And what did he do? King e2? Yep. Okay, so here, apparently he has this Check. Move. Queen takes h7. Check. Wow. I have to take it. And then he gets bishop check. c2 check in. Discovered attack on my queen. I go back. He takes. And suddenly we're in like a, um, I don't know, basically an end game. Maybe a queenless middle game. And the computer thinks white is better because they have two pawns for the exchange. And it looks like uh, their coordination is superior to mine, too. The rooks have a hard time doing anything because there's so many uh, pawns that can be thrown in this way. Also, his king is a little more centralized. It's a nifty line. Queen takes h7. Very hard move to see in, in a blitz game. So understandable that he didn't see it. Queen e4. Yeah, I must have missed some good moves here as well. Taking on a2 at any moment would have been good. Ah, that's really funny. He has Check. the same move here after g6. <laughs> the same mechanism is working. Check. This time it's a check on b3. I move the king somewhere and he takes the rook. Or he takes the queen with, the, with his rook. The same story. He's a little bit better. Funny, funny, funny. Chess is so rich, isn't it? Not that I thought I knew everything about this position um, <laughs> at the time, but I didn't think I was missing moves like queen takes h7 or queen takes f7 check. Yeah, and here I should have just taken on a2. That was foolish not to. I played queen c1 trying to get at d2, but a2 was just a free pawn and a way to do this. I was kind of paranoid about playing that move in view of bishop b3, but he doesn't have time to do that right now. So queen c1, and then here... Yeah, and time was just kind of ticking down. We both had to hustle at this point. He had, fortunately for me, about twice as less time as I did. But now I'm on the defensive. Yeah, rook takes f7. And if take, bishop takes. Check. Okay. And if I take his bishop, he takes a7 Check. with a winning queen end game. Up a couple pawns, two or three pawns. But we're in blitz mode right now, and I had... The wherewithal to hold this position, fortunately. I was just trying to trade. King g7 is a helpful move because I don't want to keep my king on the same diagonal as this bishop. It's just one of these moves that you play instinctively. Yeah, and he flagged. Wild, wild game. Three-minute game. But um, I think there were some good uh, turning points as far as the time usage. And... Points in the game were in the past, like I might have tried to calculate a win right here instead of castling. Um, but I think castling 
it's probably like the correct practical decision. As you can see, black still has a really good position. And I didn't have to waste time like looking at queen c8 check, queen takes b7, queen takes b4, or whatnot. So, so I think to be fully confident about queen takes a1, I mean, I might have had to spend more time. I, I could play queen takes a1 and just try to trust that it works out, but we all know who, how that goes sometimes. <laughs> your, uh, your intuition can fail you in, in sharp positions because you really can't rely on your intuition in sharp positions most of the time. You need exact calculation to do that. So... Hope you guys enjoyed this three-minute game. I'll be back tomorrow with a five-minute game. Hope you guys have a good day, and please leave me any feedback in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye.